Alrighty, welcome to a brand new build. Uh, this time I'm working on Fine Mold's uh, 1 1 4th scale Millennium Falcon model. It just came out, it's brand new. And thought I'd just open it up and show you since it's so new. In case you want to think about getting it yourself. Here we are. Um, I already took this, uh, the pieces out of the bags. So it comes back, but I wanted to open it up and show you guys some of the details. Uh, I glanced at this, the detail is very nice. Lots and lots of detail on this model. Check out the, uh, the rear section there. All the uh, panel lines look good. Nice little greebles. Here's the back section, excuse me, the bottom section. It's not a whole lot of uh, parts to this kit. Just mainly the top and bottom and the sides. Show you the screw here. Uh, this is one of, almost one of the only disappointing things in the kit is uh, the rear engine grill. It's uh, it's not hollow. This is supposed to be uh, a, a mesh so you can see through it, uh, but it's all one solid piece, so you can see in the back. Uh, originally, I thought about um, making my own out of styrene, uh, but now that I actually got the kit and see how thin this is, uh, I'm not even going to bother trying. Also, it's deep enough to uh, the point where I can just fill that in with black paint, and you won't be able to see it anyway, so that'll be good. So the other bits there. Hopefully that's focusing. You get a stand like all the other fine mold kits. Removable stand. What else do we have here? The other sprue. Oh, some really nice detail in those pieces there. Nice deep detail. You get a choice of landing gear um, that can be either raised or lowered. I'm planning on doing a lowered version. No broken pieces, thankfully. All right, what else do you get here? You get, uh, you get clear styrene, the canopy. And also, there we go. You get a mask to mask off all the clear parts um, when you paint the canopy. But the weird thing is, uh, it's normally when they give you a mask, it's you know cut out, pre-cut, so you can put it over uh, where you need it. This isn't pre-cut. Um, they just gave you the shape, and then you have to go through all this and cut it out yourself. I'm wondering, like, what, it, what was the point of that? To be honest, I mean, it's you could just easily use masking tape, but. Um, I guess they thought they were being helpful. <clears throat> you get all the decals here, which I'm not going to be using. And you get a nice uh, color layout like you do with most of the fine mold kits. This uh, is it's a picture of the uh, 172nd scale, though. So this might be the same one that came in that kit. Which I'm wondering if all the same details are going to be there. Because I'm not sure if this is just a scaled down version or I'm sure it is a scaled down version, but I don't know how much else they change if they remove details. Okay. So uh I am building this project for uh Scale Model Addicts Big Summer Contest. Uh, this is my entry uh, deadline is June 30th. I'm hoping to finish this and another model. Uh I'm gonna include the link at the bottom if you want to check that out. Hopefully join yourselves. Now, for reference, I'm going to reference this model kit a bit more than I did the X-Wing. There are three sites I'm going to be using. First of all, actually, there's three sites in the box. Let me show you the box again. Uh, the photo on the box is not of the model kit. It's of the original model. I'm not sure if it's the 5 foot one or the, I think it was 32 inches. But uh, you can tell right by looking at the model all the parts that they forgot. Obviously, the damage details not there and um, one thing that really stands out is a lot of little painted parts 
on uh, the kit, or not included on the decal sheet. So I'm going to use this for reference. Uh, included in the description, I'm going to add two other links to uh, pictures of the original model. And the third link is to a, a Japanese website where this modeler is taking this very same kit and uh, super detailing it. And I've checked it out and he, he is adding an amazing amount of detail for this tiny kit. I mean he cut out the canopy, he cut out all the, the clear plastic in the canopy and remade the frame. Uh, I know he's adding a bunch of tiny little extra bits to it here and there to uh, more accurize it. And considering the scale he is using some very small pieces of styrene. So that is a quick review. Very nice. Very expensive too. This is going to cost you about $60 in the States. I ended up paying a little more, unfortunately. Uh, so there you are. For the painting of this, uh, well, assembly should go pretty easy. I should be able to finish this in an evening or two. Uh, painting, I'm going to go really heavy on the uh, pigments. And um, I'm going to be adding all the damage that you see on the, still, the uh, studio model. And I'm going to have to go in and add all those extra paint bits that you see. And I plan on building a nice base for it, too. All right, that is it. Tune in uh, shortly for the first build vid. And I'll let you know if there's uh, if I run into any problems. Thanks for watching. Okay, quick update on the Millennium Falcon Fine Molds build. Uh, been studying that Japanese website a whole lot. Um, the more I look at it, the, what the guy is doing to this kit is absolutely amazing when you consider the size of this tiny little kit. Um, I'm copying on some parts and other parts I'm not even going to try. Uh, there's some easy fixes here I wanted to point out. Uh, there's certain little cutouts on the, the kit that are not fully, they're not cut out. These are supposed to be notched. And they are not. Actually, I know the 72nd scale version had the same problem. So uh, this is a real easy fix. You just take a very small file, take the flat edge, and you see here I already cut this one out just by getting the file in there and carefully doing that. Definitely don't want to go too far since it's a very small scale kit. So uh, I still need to do that to this one. Uh, another part I'm just going to show you. This is already partially done. Uh, there's several uh, tubes, wires, whatever you want to call it on the uh, kit. and. Um, Several of them, due to the casting process, they're not. They're, it's not tubular. It's um, it's a tube, but then the, the plastic goes all the way down into the base, so you get more of a big U shape. Uh, you see that a lot on plastic kits. Yeah, hopefully, you know what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna. I cut that down, and I'm in the process. I still need to find a small enough knife to trim the rest of it away. Um, and I'm gonna replace that with either. Uh, small styrene or uh, brass uh, wire, I'm not sure yet. One second, I'm trying to find an example of it here that I haven't filed off already. I know there's a couple other ones on this kit somewhere. Ah, there we go. Okay. So like this here, that looks like a wall, that's supposed to be a wire going across. So I'm going to gouge all that out and replace it with wire so it's an actual tube and not a little wall plastic. All these, in, you know what, all these inserts pretty much have the same problem with them. There's another one, there's one, there's a real good example there, that one should be real easy to see. So I'm going to cut all those out. Um, I'm going to have to go to the hobby store and find a small enough knife, or if not, I'm going to make something because at the moment I don't know exactly how I'm going to get out that out there because this is the smallest knife I got. And if you see, if I go through that, I'm going to 
was damaging a lot of the detail. Okay. Okay. Um, I was a total liar when I said I was going to take one or two days to build this uh, Falcon model. Really big liar. Uh, when I started examining the kit more, I realized there were a lot of more areas uh, to fix. I already mentioned the uh, the plumbing work here, and I thought I could take care of that pretty quickly, but uh, now I'm starting to realize it's going to take a while. But uh, good news is, all the scraping here, I found a quicker way to do that. I'm going to show you it right now. First of all, let me... One second. There, that's safer. Trying to get off as much of this as I can. And try on a new uh, camera angle here. If you hear me saying this, that, mean it, that means it works. If you don't hear me saying this, it didn't work, and I decided not to upload the video. Which will it be? Okay. Now, so, I got my uh, hobby knife here. Trying to scrape off as much as I can. Okay, now, um, mentioned earlier, this thing does not get into the tiny nooks and crannies, but this does. So I decided to whip out the Dremel to do this, and uh, it's working okay. The only problem is the Dremel moves at such a high speed, it has a tendency to uh, melt the plastic rather than cut it away. And, um, well, let me just do this and then I'll explain afterwards. I'm not sure if you can hear me now. Trying to grind away as much of the wire as possible. Without damaging anything. It does get a bit difficult to see because of all the burrs that this leaves. Okay, so now I've grounded away the wire. Bring my knife back here. Uh, leaves a lot of burrs from the melting plastic. So, scraping off as much of the waste as I can. Now, yeah. okay, that's not bad. Now for the secret ingredient. A little plastic cement. This will smooth everything out. And it'll eat away at all those tiny little burrs that are still left. I'm in the country there all of a sudden, I don't know why. This needs to go on very thin. And glob it on. Oh, get out of there. Okay. All right. There. Not bad. Um, I'm doing the bottom of the ship right now, and I have no idea why. I even uh, started doing the bottom because it's, you're not going to be able to see it. I'm replacing all the wires and it's pointless. Uh, but it is good practice. So if I screw up majorly, uh, hopefully I'll figure out what I'm doing uh, by the time I get to the top. So there the wires are done. Let me 
Let me clean this up real quick. And fit it into the ship. Just to show you. That, you know what, hang on. This is still wet. Let me grab one of the ones I did earlier. There we go. We got one already in the ship. So, here's one. It's already done. I need a pointer. You can see the shiny part, hopefully, where I ground down the wire. A little there, a little there. And then I'm going to replace this. I'm hopefully going to replace it with styrene. I'm going to go to the hobby store tomorrow and get some styrene. Some uh, one millimeter stuff. And uh, replace this. I'd rather use that than wire. Because the styrene I could melt into place with the plastic cement. Okay. So I have to do this eight times. There's four holes on uh, the top and four holes on the bottom. This is the bottom. And then there's the other insert pieces. See, this one's already been cleaned up. There were wires in there. Got one from here I need to replace. And there's some other ones that go up here. All ground down. And this one's done as well. Oh, I started looking at, uh, really looking at those reference photos I said I was going to examine before. And, um, the, the details on the Greebles on the models, I, I was hoping they'd be really accurate because they already did the big 72nd. I know they went through a lot of effort. And, uh, partly due to scale and some of the, some of the little Greebles and, uh, shapes are kind of, are pretty off is the point I'm trying to make. Um, virtually like every inch I'm looking at the kit going well that's not right that's not right that's not supposed to look like that and so um, I could spend months and months and months accurizing this thing but I'm not going to go that far I am doing small things like these were uh, solid round pieces here I drilled a little holes in them because that's how they uh, look on the kit and I did the same here Draw some holes, they didn't come out as clean as the other ones though. And there's some other things I haven't decided on yet, like this bar is supposed to be a round tube going across. It's pretty nice, um, I may replace it, I may not. I'm worried that I'm going to ruin it, make it look worse, ruin it, if I try to scrape all this off. Just to replace it with something that uh, looks just about the same. And there's some other things I noticed where there's parts missing. There's a little round nub that goes at the end of this. I'll go ahead and add that to it. And um, so um, I'm going to get some very small strips of styrene and add them to uh, wherever it needs. There's one other thing I was. Oh, that's the other thing I was going to mention. Uh, I mentioned earlier how I was sanding out all the little notches here. Well this piece here didn't have any notches at all so I had to totally scratch these. I mean the other ones had like it was faintly there but it wasn't cut out. This one didn't it wasn't even faintly there. So this has been cut out properly to the best of my uh, ability to look at the reference photos and find out how exactly to do it so it's it's, a, it's good. I'm happy with it. Alright, uh, that's where it stands right now. Uh, it's going to be slow going for a while. I don't know how long this is going to take me. I'd say a, at least a week, I think, until I get everything replaced um, and happy. Uh, Alright, thanks for watching. Alright, um... Working on the uh, fine molds Millennium Falcon here, and uh, I'm trying to replace all the plumbing. And I think I am having the most time-consuming, frustrating modeling experience of my entire life. Uh, let me show you what I've done so far. So I used the Dremel and the knife to scrape away all the uh, the plumbing inside, all the roll recesses. And on this section here, I went through and replaced it all with styrene. And 
bending the styrene using a pair of pliers and just my hands to work it back and forth till it's a bit loose and then using uh, uh, plastic cement to weld it into place it was just so frustrating getting all these pieces to fit and um, there's still a lot of gaps where they meet up with the uh, <clears throat> excuse me with the uh, molded on plumbing so uh, this is the bottom it's a good thing I practice on this uh, because it's just it, sorry it, this really it was just so frustrating to do um, I'm physically mentally mad, mentally exhausted from doing it but so here's the styrene it's a uh, 0.5 and 1 millimeter styrene rod depending on the the size needed some of these some of this plumbing work is different sizes so that's what I use there now the other option I had was to use brass rod and brass wire which is what I did on the top you can see right here I actually started using brass rod and then I'm just really worried that it's gonna it would snap off while uh, painting it or something and if it breaks off then trying to glue it down it's gonna create a huge mess um, I started off doing this and then I decided to try the styrene and now I'm back to the rod uh, now with the rod I've been scraping away all the uh, pre-existing plumbing on the face of the ship I didn't do that with styrene with with the hopes that I could just uh, blend it in by using the uh, plastic cement um, but it's gonna be a lot harder to blend in the wire with the plastic so I went ahead and just replaced the entire length of uh, plumbing wherever it met up and to where it goes into the piece so this here is I think this is done yeah this piece is done here and I'm using super glue to put it down which I'm not also not sure if that's a good idea or not um, I should possibly use uh, enamel gloss varnish like I did with the screws on the uh, Mac Fleet kit um, I still may try that but the super glue I'm worried about it drying chunky and you'll be able to see it once I start painting it uh, and it's less of a problem if I use the enamel varnish but um, when gluing this down with these odd intricate shapes it's sometimes helpful to glue down one end and then use that as a anchor to glue down the other so I don't know um, it's looking okay now but sometimes when you put paint on you, you get surprised so this is piece I'm working on right now and since I got nothing better to do I thought I'd just show you the process of how I'm doing it I'm replacing this wire here at the moment I've already been scraping it off being very careful to avoid all the little greebles there they are everywhere it's a very slow delicate process now the uh, Brass rod is going to cover this, which is good, because getting this perfect is next to impossible. I've already accepted I'm going to have to rebuild some of the greebles. It's in the process of uh, stripping this off and then sanding it down. I have damaged a few on the other portions. Try to stay away from sandpaper as much as possible because it's really hard to get in here. very small portion right next to that mold piece I'll be very careful getting that off a 
Okay. There we go. Now, um, the molded on plumbing covered up some little panel lines. So, I'll go back I'll carefully put those in with my uh, scriber here. Now it's a good idea, which of course I thought of after the fact, take a picture of uh, all the pieces before scraping off all the plumbing. I thought I had enough reference pictures, but I found a real difficult time uh, finding reference pictures of uh, the bottom of the model, especially on certain sides, like uh, this side here I never found pictures of and then I scraped it all off and then I wasn't sure how to rebuild it. So take a picture of the piece on the sprue and then you can reference that if you want to uh, follow along. Okay. Get a brush and uh, get rid of all that excess. And I need... whoops, excuse me, I almost spilled all my plastic cement there. And I'll put on a little bit of plastic cement to smooth everything out. Damn, it's one of my little greebles there. So this will smooth the whole thing out. Any little fine imperfections. Alright. So, here's my rod. I believe this is uh, 0.5 millimeter. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, I have this, and then I have some slightly larger stuff. I believe it's one millimeter, and then I have some really fine wire, which I have misplaced for the moment. Oh, there we are. This is some super fine wire for the really small parts. Uh, I got this out of a uh, Mac kit, a Super Jerry that I'm also working on. And I'm not sure if you can get wire this small uh, from K&S. K&S is the ones, if you go to a hobby store and buy brass rod, it's most likely going to be K&S brand. I'm not sure they make this it's this small. But if I run out, I do have some standby options. I got some, uh, I believe this is picture hanging wire. Wait, no, I'm sorry, that's the wrong one. And you have this other wire. It's a jewelry wire initially, uh, initially I believe, which is the same uh, diameter. The stuff is a bit, little bit softer, so I'd rather use this step, which would, is better in holding a straight line. Okay, but let me put that small one aside because we're using a little slightly larger one here. So this piece goes from here where I scraped it off initially down to here and then makes a little right turn so I gotta go ah, there's a lot of turns, it's gotta go down and up, it goes up here then turns down it makes a turn here then it goes turns back, goes straight down then turn here yeah see this is the frustrating part just getting all these bends correct like this wire is uh, thin enough and soft enough to uh, take all this and if I make a mistake I could bend it back but small uh, needle nose pliers just like that make a nice easy bend and constantly make measurements 
that's a little too high but easily clipped off. I'm only trying to get the uh, area for the next bend which is going to be there. Clippers. I think that's about right, I hope. Better leave more than take off too much. Now this piece is going to be facing down, so I'm not really concerned about the uh, straightness of it but this piece is going to be more visible and when you use clippers you tend to get a little uh, arrow shape to them so I want to sand this down use my pliers here to make this easier That's Very gently, this stuff does bend easy. There we go. Test fit. Okay. I trim a little bit more off this end. That that is about just about all right. So then, um, I think I'm going to try the uh, the enamel varnish on this piece. See how it works out, and then I'll let you know how how it worked in the uh, next video. So. Uh, this piece is almost done, then I got a massive amount of wires going into the piece that goes here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And so I have to scrape all this off. This is the big one here. That has to be scraped off. And these two super fine ones here. I think I'll, I'll leave this part and just scrape off here and here. And then I have the pieces on the front too. These are some very long wires as well. Two in there, three in here. Luckily, these two don't have any. Whew. So, um, yeah, this is very time consuming and it's driving me nuts. I really hope it's uh, all worth the effort. All right, thanks for watching. Alright, um, not sure where I left off, uh, I haven't started editing the videos yet and I've been shooting quite a bit, um, so hopefully I do this in the right order. Uh, the plumbing work is all done, see there, now the next thing I'm working on is the side here of this front thrust piece. Now um, the detail on this I think I mentioned before is uh, very poor. When you cast a uh, plastic model basically you got, you got it's a two-piece mold you got the top and the bottom that gets smushed together and then you, they push in all the plastic and it dries and it forms the model. Now um, the thing with that is pieces on the side uh, don't you can't cast them very well because you got to be able to pull the thing back out of the mold so you don't, can't get a lot of side details that are deep otherwise they'll just break off now that's why there's side pieces like around the uh, bottom of the ship they're all separate pieces but for some reason 
they uh, didn't bother doing it with this. This should be should have been a separate piece entirely sticking on here to give you all the detail, but they uh, fine molds went on the cheap and didn't bother. So that's why all this detail here just ends in nothingness. So uh, I thought I was going to just kind of scribe it to detail it up a bit, but uh, I decided I'm going to take all this off here and. Uh, the stuff back here is also supposed to be detailed. I'm going to just add some bits to that, but all this is going to be taken off. Now, um, before I start, let me show you. Oops, stuff stuck to me. Let me show you what I already did. I cut some pieces out of styrene. I think it's one millimeter styrene sheet to uh, go on the side of the ship. This is going to be attached yeah. tiny stuff okay well hopefully you get the idea that's gonna go attached there oh uh, that's what I wanted to mention now uh, you notice this piece is angled at about a 45 degree angle here uh, but the one I cut is flat in the front now I've been uh, the Japanese website I mentioned I've been following him a lot and he's doing the same thing replacing this but uh, he also cut this at an angle and I'm not sure what reference he's using but from everything I could find it's not supposed to be angled it's supposed to be flat it's a 90 degree cut you can see on the kit on the cover here it's not angled it goes straight down and all the reference photos I find it goes straight down as well so I'm not sure where the, the angle look comes from but uh, I decided to go ahead and do it straight hopefully that's accurate now um, let me show you the other side here a la cooking show style I already started on this one uh, these pieces are one by 0.5 millimeter strips and uh, hopefully I showed you how I cut those or I'm gonna edit those into the video right now so uh, they're all glued into place. Uh, it's a little rough, they're not entirely even. I still need to go and uh, sand them down to flush them out a bit. I'm waiting until it's totally dry before I start that. And uh, you notice I cut away all the detail. So it's a flash, flash, flush fit. And I'm going to go ahead and do that on the other side now to show you how it's done. Broke out the Dremel again. I got a different tip in it this time. This is a uh, steel cutter. I don't know if there's other, any other name for it, but you can see it's a uh, flat side steel cutter. And luckily the other side came out fairly well, almost perfect. I did gouge into the plastic a little bit where I didn't want to. So let's try this again. Hopefully it goes just as well. Doing this, whoops, doing this very carefully. Gentle hand. Putting almost no pressure on the Dremel. Does make quite a mess. I'm trying to cut it right up to this line here without ruining, ruining it. I know I clip once the all the uh, lines disappear. I know I'm close. 
We got a little bit on the edge there. We got to take off. Couch in the plastic again. Same thing I did the other side. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> Sorry. Stuff all over the camera. Have to clean that off for the next video. I don't want to touch it right now. I filthy. All right. So. Uh, brush, brush, brush. Alright, that didn't come out as good as the other side. Definitely got some gouges in there. Took a bit more off there than I wanted to as well. But it's flush here, which is good. So, the next step now is to use my... Uh, I'm going to be using the seam scraper, and I'm going to use some sandpaper to get that flush, and then I'm going to use some uh, squadron green putty to fill it all out and go over with the seam scraper again. So I get a nice flush area. I think I took off a little bit too much. Yeah, I took off a little too much down there. I don't want that to be covered. No biggie. And I took a little chunk out of there, unfortunately. That's going to be hard to fix. I get more nervous when people are watching. You should have closed your eyes when I was doing that. Okay, so uh, that's it. I need to go clean up and uh, hopefully get all this together. All right, entering the home stretch, I hope, on this model. Uh, I've begun doing all the extra detail work on the top of the ship. Uh, last time I was talking about uh, replacing all these and as you can see it's all done and I'm going to detail it up so starting from the beginning here I got my uh, sheet styrene this is about one millimeter uh, I'll tell you right now I think this should have been a little bit thinner uh, I should use uh, or is this half a millimeter this is a half a millimeter excuse me and I should have used a thinner sheet um, because looking at the model again it's it's barely noticeable that it's there um, so what I ended up doing I could have replaced it but I decided just to scrape it down using uh, my exacto knife I just to thin it out a bit and then I scrape down the edges so it's uh, the thickness is less noticeable and below that that's just a little piece of uh, styrene rod that I cut at an angle and glued down there and these you already seen now Something else I want to mention, I've been using that Japanese website for a lot of reference, and I think this is another area that he might be mistaken on. And I made the mistake of using his pictures as a reference instead of the actual model. These, I think, uh, these should be lower than this piece here. So what I think I should have done is make these slightly longer and make this slightly shorter. Uh, instead I made them all even. But uh, it's good enough. If you don't tell anybody, I won't. Then moving along, I got to this piece here. I ended up uh, using the steel cutter to uh, trim this down a little bit. It was uh, it stuck out, and I decided to bring it bring it in. I think it stuck out too far, and I ended up damaging this. I nicked this little piece of styrene here. That's why the green uh, putty is covering up. I still need to sand that down. But then I just took uh, some very small strips and squares of styrene and glued those in and I drilled holes in them and this is styrene rod this is one millimeter I uh, cut thin little slivers of and uh, glued those in place and then also drilled those 
And then I added this entirely. There was a, a rod here that was in the wrong place. It was a piece of plastic, I should say. I had to replace it with a rod, but it was supposed to be, it was down here. It's supposed to be up higher on the model. And then there's this little block that's supposed to be on the model. I added that because that did not exist at all. And I uh, detailed it up with a little wire. And moving all along here. Now, a while back, I said I was drilling out all these little round bits all over the model because they're supposed to be uh, have holes in them. And uh, what I did not realize was that this thing's made out of uh, titanium. And I busted three drill bits trying to drill in all the holes, so I've pretty much given up on it. I'm, I'm not doing it anymore. And every time I went to drill one, I get like three good ones and then a break on the fourth one. So I got holes here where they end in the nothingness. I'm going to go back and fill up, fill up the holes, and I've given up on it. Right. The back here, there were wires here that were completely missing from the kit. You can see the, uh, this one here, there's supposed to be another one here, and it was totally missing, so I added that. Um, it's a little higher than these. It's supposed to match, so I'm not sure how good it's going to look. I'm afraid it's going to stand out a bit too much, but we'll see at the end. There's some extra little detail pieces here that I added from, uh, this is a half a millimeter rod. I think this is two millimeter. I had it in my generic pile of rod that I cut in half and trimmed down to fit. Same thing on the other side. And then over here, um, I had to replace these little braces that went across the model that I trimmed off uh, a while back. And I had to cut the thinnest possible strips of styrene I could to rebuild this. And I will guarantee you that these will not make it through the whole painting process. They're going to disappear at some point. Uh, they're so thin that even the plastic cement was just causing to dissolve entirely. I had to build like six of them to get them on. Alright, so there's where we stand. What's up next? Alright. Um, here I started marking out with a pen some of the uh, battle damage. There's a bunch of holes on the model that they're drilling into here. I think I've practiced on a few uh, bits of styrene. What I think I'm going to do is drill um, some holes in with my uh, my drill using different size drill bits, and then I'm going to widen them out with the engraving tool and the Dremel. That's probably going to be uh, the next thing you'll see. And also on the list of things to do, the uh, gun turret sits on top. Was This was originally a flat piece, so there was no actual way to climb into the gun turret like they're supposed to. There's supposed to be a chair and everything in there. I'm not going to go that far as to detail it uh, with the chair, but I'm going to, uh, I cut it out, and I think, I haven't decided yet if I'm, I'm going to add a tube or something because there's a ladder and a tube they climb up to to get into here. So I may add a tube or once it's in the model and since it's all dark in there I don't think you're actually gonna see it so I may just leave it like that. And the other big project is... ah there it is. Okay this is the cockpit. Now I haven't checked a lot of reference for the cockpit yet but I saw this and I could tell something is wrong. Uh, you tell me, how do you get in those chairs? If this was a 57 Impala, you would open the door and climb in there, but uh, there's no way to get into the chairs from the back here. So something's definitely wrong here. Um, I glanced a couple pictures of the cockpit. I have to see more. But uh, first of all, the chairs are, swi are supposed to be swivelable. Swivelable. They're supposed to turn in the movie. But also the center console, I think, is way too high, and it's also it sticks out way too far. Uh, I did see one scene where uh, Han is resting his arm on this, but I still think it's supposed to be further up. So the plan is to cut all this out, put the chairs on swivels or little um, styrene rod because I want one of them turned, and the, the console. Hopefully I won't have to rebuild the whole thing. I'm hoping just to cut it out and then cut it in half and then move it up. 
and then the final thing is the door in the back because I don't believe there's supposed to be a door there it's just a hallway so I have to cut out this section and then add a little hallway of styrene the thing is that in the movies you, they go out here and they immediately make a left turn and they kind of ignore the fact that on the model kit there's a big hallway you go down to so it's I'm gonna make it accurate to the scenes you see at the cockpit so there's gonna be a little hallway that goes here and into the wall but uh, that's the way it's done at least it'll be accurate it won't make sense but it'll be accurate all right so next scene a uh, whole bunch of grinding all right working on the battle damage now I already drilled some holes into the uh, model here so no going back now and the plan is to use the Dremel with the engraving tip to uh, kind of deepen them, deepen the angles and to rough them up a little bit. Hope this works. Trying to keep it rough, it looks so. Just doing like stabbing it, so I'm going to put it in the round hole. hard to do and the smaller ones taking out the film from the inside let's try that okay um Unfortunately, that engraving tip is too big. Um, I'm thinking of a plan B here. One second. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, actually, that didn't come out too bad. It's a little too clean looking, though. Still look like they were just punched out. Let's try something a bit more barbaric here. Try thinning out the back a little bit more. See what I'm doing. That's too much melted plastic in my way now. All right, now we're getting closer. And what I should have done is thin the plastic from the back to first, which I actually was thinking of doing, but I didn't have a large enough uh, steel cutter to do it properly.
Alright, okay, that one's a little, a little on the big side. Just adding a, want to add a few dents. Okay. Not bad, about 8 out of 10. Uh, I'm going to have to go through and clean this up a bit. With some uh, plastic cement. Alright, a uh, quick update on the battle damage vid. Um, I think I just showed you uh, this damage here, and then I started working off camera on adding the uh, other battle damage on the other parts of the ship, and I was using my uh, engraving tip in the Dremel and actually this is way too big I know this is so incredibly small but when you get down to the model it was just scratching was doing was just way too huge and I uh, went around town trying to find smaller engraving bits and I couldn't find any and I didn't want to wait and order it online so uh, I did find this though um, I think this is a diamond sander I think they call it but anyway, it's basically a sanding uh, tip shaped like a cone, and uh, just, I didn't think this would work, but it actually works out pretty good. So, I'll show you the scratches I did in here. There you go. And uh, this does leave a lot of burrs, so I had to clean it up with quite a bit of uh, plastic cement. And then actually I went back and uh, deformed all these holes a little bit more. And at the moment, I put I put uh, styrene on the bottom of it, so you couldn't look all the way at, down inside uh, the empty guts of the ship. And let me find the other part. There's some really deep scratches on the the bottom of the model that I also did. So and then once I uh, fill those up with some dark wash after getting painted, and do some uh, black pastel work on it, it should look good. That is all. So I started working on the cockpit and I killed it. There, there used to be little chairs and a little place to sit there for uh, the firewall guy and yep, it's all gone. Um, I tried cutting out the chairs using the Dremel, I was trying to leave the walls in place and uh, got a little hot, melted one of the chairs, no big deal there, uh, but I ended up needing to uh, cut out the walls and then to cut just everything out and then while I was at it I said what the heck might as well take out the chairs in the back too so everything's gone. I've sanded it down and now I have to rebuild the floor so I got something to attach everything to but at least now I can swivel all the chairs into the proper position. I'm just gonna add probably styrene rod to the bottom of these and then I'm gonna run brass wire through them just to uh, just for some extra strength which means also I'm gonna build up the bottom here to uh, so there's some depth to uh, glue the rod into. Now the walls I may just leave off because that will give me a bit more room to work with to position everything. Because so I know it's a tight cockpit but uh, I'm not sure if it was it's supposed to be as tight as what we originally had. I would like to uh, fix the chairs but, um, you know, I just don't want to go through that much effort because I know the rear chairs are wrong. They're supposed to be uh, more curved in the back and they go up pretty high. And the front chairs, I think, are fine. I really don't see them too much because they're a lot lower. So you can see the actors in the back. So that's the plan. I just got to make sure I don't put everything too high. But since I went this far, I'm going to detail the back here of the cockpit. I'm just gonna probably take some styrene 
uh, circles and just glue them in there randomly in a few squares. I'm not going to try to accurize it, I'm just going to detail it up. It did! Alright, um, I've decimated the cockpit entirely. I mean, that's it. I, I got that. And I'm still not done cutting. Um, I finally figured out what the problem was with the cockpit. Um, the floor is too high. It sits center of the circle and I finally figured out that it's supposed to be lower. It's supposed to go, it's supposed to be down like, at least like that. So, uh, that's what I'm trying to do right now. Um, these chairs that are almost almost to the top of the door, they're supposed to be a lot lower. You can even see, don't have to go searching for reference photos. You can tell right there where the door is and where the bottom of the chair is. So, um, what I'm doing is I basically I cut all the cut off all the attachment points, and there's two little braces right here that hold the cockpit, and I've trimmed down the cockpit, and I'm going to lower the entire thing. So you can see the mounting point there, maybe where I trimmed it down, and now instead of on top of it, I'm going to be underneath it. Um, so there's that, and I have to still cut the back of this off and raise it up and then add some uh, styrene stock into there so it still reaches the top of the circle rather than being a little bit down. Then I can start rebuilding everything. Um, unfortunately, I think I lost the center console. I don't know, I, I don't know where it is. I may have thrown it away with scrap. So, uh, no biggie, it wasn't correct anyway, I needed to make a new one, and, uh, the more I look at this, the more I think this is totally incorrect. This giant dashboard piece shouldn't be like this at all, so I may toss this as well. But, the reason for going through all this mess, which wasn't supposed to be a mess, is because of uh, this. I have little Germans. This is a 144 scale Dragon uh, 60 centimeter Morser Odin artillery gun, and it has little tiny people, the same scale as the Millennium Falcon. And you see here, there's Chewie, and there's C3PO, and there's Leia. And there's the guy from uh, Firewall. Okay, so plan is put him in the uh, cockpit. That's why I'm going through all this effort, and they wouldn't fit because uh, the floor was too high. So, oh, I hope this works out. This is a lot of chopping. Um, the other thing I'm going to try to do is detail up the cockpit a, a bit. You know, there's supposed to be buttons and doohickeys all over the place and there's nothing here. So I'm not too sure about how I'm going to do that because uh, it's a lot of work at a tiny little scale. I thought about using uh, photo etch brass. They have to make screws that are more like rivets, so actually yeah, they're rivets to put it on there, but that's a lot of work. Um, I thought about cutting styrene strips, cutting millions of little circles, but that would be a little bit too big, and also that's an incredible amount of work. Uh, I'm not 100% sure right now. I need to find some sort of very thin material that's covered with tiny little buttons, some sort of screen type thing. If you know of anything, and you have an idea, let me know. Because um, the third option I had was I was thinking of just drilling into the plastic. Uh, to recess the buttons. Uh, so rather than sticking out, they'll be in, and then when I go to paint it, I'll just paint the cockpit black and then go in with white to each one of those little buttons, like a white wash or something, so they stand out. So that's probably the angle I'm going right now, unless someone out there has a better idea. 
I just gotta be careful I don't drill through uh, any of the canopy portion. I don't think I have to drill through much of that. Okay, good. Yeah, it's just mainly the sides, mostly the back I'm worried about. Alright, uh, so the plan right now is I gotta cut this off. Uh, I got to, I could have just rebuilt the floor, but I'm not going to, but I need to put some styrene on the bottom and smooth it out. Cut some styrene rods for the chairs. So, uh, I can get those back in place. Then, where's my, my little German? Then I gotta cut these slightly. Yeah, that's a pretty good Han right there already. But, uh, Leia is gonna take some work. I may have to scratch build her because she's a bit skinnier I'm trying to show you why I'm going through all this effort well oh, you little bugger tweezers tweezers so the reason why I'm going through all this effort when you put him in the chair he's uh, gonna hit the roof so that's why I'm going through all this. So I need to lower all this by a few millimeters and then hopefully it all should fit. Okay. All right, here is my fully rebuilt cockpit. Um, so, I butchered the entire thing and I spent the, like the last three days rebuilding it. Uh, let me see if I can start from the beginning here. So all the seats, the center console and the two side walls I cut out. I cut off the back section um, which is now in the, uh, the ship. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, I added a bit of styrene to extend this out a little bit farther because the whole thing got moved forward the little holding tabs that were holding the floor in place, those were cut away so I could lower the floor. Uh, the entire floor, floor was moved forward a bit. The dashboard essentially was, I cut, just cut off the entire front of the dashboard with all the controls. What well, should have been controls, it was actually more just a flat dashboard piece on the model. Um, here's the original, that's also a little bit lower. Then I went about rebuilding everything. So I got a uh, sheet of styrene here with a bunch of little greebles I've been adding to it. Uh, I got the control yokes, I guess you want to call them. It's actually, they're just little, uh, I don't know if you can see in there or not, the little U shaped grab handles from an armor kit I happen to have right here, and they were in perfect size, so I went with that. The chairs, I ended up using the originals again. Uh, the backs, I beefed up the headrest a little bit. <clears throat> excuse me, a little bit to make them higher. Um, they're not, they're slightly more accurate. They're not 100% accurate. Uh, and then obviously I added the crew. Oh, and also I rebuilt the console there on the bottom. I lowered it, I shortened it and lowered it. Uh, and then the crew, I've added all my tiny little Germans that I uh, scraped off the helmets and some of the extremity bits, the, the bags they had on them, so those were chopped off. So here is final product. So now the scene I'm recreating is when the Millennium Falcon is uh, stuck to the back of the Star Destroyer. They're hiding and they're about to get released with the garbage. So um, this chair is empty because Chewie is down below about to release the landing claw as it said in the movie uh, you have Han here and Leia looking over her shoulder they're looking for uh, a place to hide and they talk about going to Lando's Cloud City uh, and then you have C-3PO here who's shut off at the moment so it's not the whole thing is not 100% accurate but it's as far as I was willing to go um, let me show you the back real quick. So here's the back. Uh, there definitely is a door there. I don't know why. I think the scene I watched, the door didn't shut. So um, I was planning on cutting it out and making the hallway, but then I rewatched the scene I'm recreating, and the door definitely does shut there. So 
rebuilt the door, it's slightly more accurate, and then I just went about adding a bunch of little greebles to it to break up the surface. Okay. Put this in to show you it all together. Now, uh, the difficult part with this is that this kit is based off of the uh, the model used in movies, the probably the 32nd uh, inch Millennium Falcon. Uh, the scene I'm creating here is from a set that is the cockpit set that the actors actually worked in, and that's what's proved the biggest problem is because the cockpit on the model is looks nothing like the set because you know the dimensions are totally different. Um, to give you a good example, I had the same problem with the guns that go on the top of the uh, the top of the center of the ship, the top and the bottom. I was watching the part where uh, Han and Luke are fighting off the TIE fighters as they escape the Death Star and then I saw the guns and I said, oh my god, these are completely inaccurate, I'm going to totally rebuild them and then I looked at the guns on the model of the Millennium Falcon and realized, no, these are actually accurate to that. So. There, there's a difference between the set that sets they used inside the Millennium Falcon for the actors and the model. So that's what the difficult time with this was trying to balance those two things. Um, because the cockpit's way too small for the figures um, and just the dimensions are totally wrong from the, the set to the model. Everyone thoroughly confused? Good, I am. Uh, reason I'm telling you all this because there's certain things like the figures, they're supposed to be 144, they might be slightly too big, um, but they're still way too big to actually fit in the cockpit to match uh, the cockpit set. So I had to uh, do some chopping of legs to get everything to fit. Uh, Han has lost his legs entirely. Uh, Leia lost a couple uh, inches in her legs and C-3PO, because I had to get him sitting down, has got the uh, the uh, King of the Hill dad lost his shins operation, so he's a midget. But I finally managed to get everyone to sit, and they barely all fit in the cockpit. And once everything is sealed up and put in, It all should look just fine. There we go. I'm sorry. That's now it's fitting. So uh, the plan now is to get this primed and start painting it. Ah, jeez, I just sorry, I just broke off one of the styrene bits. All right, stupid of me. So I need to get this primed and painted now because uh, I need to get the whole cockpit painted and pushed in the uh, the tube here and sealed up so that I can go about painting the outside. Um, I was originally looking for ways to add a bunch of little buttons and I finally decided I'm just going to use paint and just put a bunch of tiny little uh, white dots all, all over the place because once it's all sealed up, it's not going to be that visible anyway, and it should be uh, satisfactory. Okay. Alright, here is the just completed and painted cockpit. Uh, the paint and ink is actually still drying. So, give you a little flyby here. Uh, I went with a lot brighter colors than is actually uh, inside the cockpit, because it the uh, detail is so small and once I cover, put the canopy on top you're going to lose a lot of it so um, I want them to try to stand out some more so and also it's, it's not 100% accurate I'm well aware of that but uh, you know there's only so much you can do at this scale the figures came out pretty good I mean I guess that doesn't quite look like Harrison Ford but uh, well who knows? And uh, here's the back of the cockpit. All the little greebles. Just uh, 
dots of red, blue, and uh, white I used with a very tiny brush. And now, put it both together. Actually, whoop, wait, I forgot a step. This goes on first. So, there we are. So, all that detail I did in the back, you cannot see at all. Oh well. But the console comes out pretty well. Works pretty good, I think. Um, still have to mask all this off, and I'm gonna paint in. Uh, I gotta paint the uh, the frame of the canopy, so I'm, I'm gonna lose more of the detail in there, and I knew that from the start. It's somewhat of a wasted effort. <laughs> I have to admit, but um, oh well, it's done. Okay, the model's going along pretty well, uh, and I need to start working on the base um, because I can't finish the landing gear until I get the base done. Uh, since I'm building the back of the star destroyer for the, uh, the Millennium Falcon to be stuck onto, uh, I can't add the landing gear until I have the Star Destroyer base built because there's different levels due to all the greebles. So um, I need to get started on that and then that'll determine if I have to chop down any of the landing gear or adjust their height. So the base and here it is. This is a picture frame. Eight and a half by ten. Picked up at my uh, local craft store. Picture frames make excellent bases. Um, you got wide variety of sides uh, it's perfectly straight and it's cheap this was five dollars uh, if I went with like wood you know this would cost fifty dollars um, and I don't need to sand it I don't need to do anything to it so this is good to go um, give you an idea of the size here this is eight and a half by ten so the model is going to be like this I could have gone a little larger. Um, I tried nine by twelve, but that was way too big. Uh, they do have eight and a half by eleven, which I was thinking about going with, but I think this this is good, decent size. I don't want it to get too big because if uh, the base is too big, then it starts detracting from uh, the model. Falcon's already small enough as it is. I don't want a base that makes it look smaller. So that's the idea of the positioning. Now, I had the idea to build the uh, the scene with the Millennium Falcon stuck to the Star Destroyer. I thought of that even before um, I had the model, and I thought, oh, gee, I'm going to be uh, so original in doing this. And then, um, after starting the work, I started looking at the, uh, the Japanese website I keep mentioning. I'll include that link again on the description since I mentioned it every single time. Uh, I didn't realize at the time, but he's doing the same thing, and he actually already started on it. So here, here I go thinking I'm original, and someone else is already doing it. However, he's building the entire rear section of the Star Destroyer, that entire back half of that upper T section, I don't know what you call it, including the giant ball thing on top. He's going way, 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 way beyond what I can do. Um, so there's that. Last thing I wanted to show you are uh, the landing gear themselves. Here they are. Now I just tried to I, I decided to try something new, which was I've added uh, magnets to the kit. These are small, rare earth magnets. I guess you call them. I don't know why they call them rare earth because you find them everywhere. Don't seem to be that rare. So these are very small. These are one millimeter by. Uh, hang on a second. Let me get a ruler and tell you. In case you want to try it yourself. Oh, they're very strong. But that's uh, that's here. That's half a half a centimeter. So what is that? Five millimeters? Yeah, five millimeters. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Now my plan was to put one of these in every single landing 
pad, and there are uh, eight total. You got two in each section, I believe. One, two, three. No, I'm sorry. There's one, two, three, four, five, and then six, seven. There's seven. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Okay. Um, so I was planning on doing seven, and actually, I think that might be too much. These suckers are very strong. Let me show you. Tweezers there. Oops. If I don't drop it, I drop it there. Let's try that again. See? That's pretty strong. That's for that little tiny magnet in there. Oh, they love to talk to each other. So I think five is going to be enough. Now, I want to show you how I get these in here. Let me get these out of the way. So I got, you got the bottom pad, that's like that, and I should have my tools ready before I start this. So I got the steel cutter that, um, this is the same one I used to trim the sides of the front rectangle thrusty thing on the, uh, the upper portion of the model. Uh, however, this time I got it in my cordless drill. Um, I tried doing this with the Dremel and it just it spins way too fast and it ended up melting the plastic. This works a lot slower. Though it's not incredibly easy to get it centered. I'm just going to show you real quick here how it goes. Faster speed is better at keeping it center. It does want to dance a lot. You gotta, you gotta work it. Hang on a second. So there we go. Okay. Yeah, there Take some work getting to dig in. Luckily, you're not going to cut yourself on this. So even though I keep hitting my fingers, I'm totally fine. So don't go too deep. It's find it easier to go in, make a hole, and then go around and widen it out. Okay. I'm not going to go through the whole process for you, but there you go. That's start there. And you see, no hole on the top. So I have to widen that out a little more, and it's a little uneven. So I got to dig down a little bit more on that side, but that's the process. All right, thanks for watching. All right, want to give you a quick update on the base build. Um, I've been working on this for about two days now, studying the reference photos and just cutting out tons and tons of various shapes of styrene. So, start off the base, the base part of the base which is going to go uh, inside the frame. This is uh, 0.4 millimeter styrene and I had to glue two sheets together to get it the right size. And there's the center section here. This was originally 0.3 millimeter styrene and then I added, it was too low, I decided to raise it up a little bit, a bit give it more depth. So I put uh, 0.4 underneath it and then I decided I think I'm still going to raise it a bit more. Um, and there's this section here. This is a whole lot of cutting of uh, styrene. I think it's added by some more. This is uh, 0.08 by 0.1 millimeter strips mostly. So I, th I think this is the door that opens up where all the garbage comes out. And then this section I just started working on here. Needs to be trimmed down, obviously, but this goes up on top. And then there's going to be some vertical bracing going along here. And then I still have to go back and add a bunch more extra detailing bits and doodads all around. Now, the one thing is um, normally when you build a base, you don't want it symmetrical. You want it uh, 
you know, have something more on one side and less on the other. Uh, I'm not doing it in this case because I have to match the scene. And unfortunately, Millennium Falcon is placed exactly like this, exactly symmetrical to all this stuff, so I had to build all this symmetrical and it's all balanced even. So, uh, doing a base like this actually is kind of boring visually. I mean, even if it was just off like that and this was cut off, it would be more visually appealing, but I can't do that because that's, that's not how the Falcon is uh, positioned during the scene. So, there we have it. Um, still concerned about how I'm going to uh, mount this here. I started putting together some of the uh, landing gear, and I still haven't figured out, I knew that was going to fall out, I haven't figured out how I'm going to mount them all because they're all going to be on different depths of a uh, stack styrene. So um, I'm not too sure, I, I can't make up my mind, so I'm just going to go ahead and do this and then figure it out at the end. Okay, here's an update on base. Um, can't remember actually what I showed you <laughs> last time I was building this. Uh, I got all the basic shapes um, figured out. This is basically three sections. We have the top, the mi middle section, which is in two parts, and then the bottom section. Uh, I built the basic shape, it's all done, and I've been going through and adding little greebles wherever, uh, trying to match my reference photos. Um, the kits, the Morser kit that I got the figures from had a whole bunch of great little bits included in it that uh, worked out very well. Uh, I got some pieces here from the Gundam kit, from the uh, X-Wing, if you saw that project. And at the moment I'm just going through and trying to figure out some other extra little bits I can add. Uh, still working on there's some few pieces here that I have to add um, but I also have to worry about uh, the landing gear of the model I don't want to be in the way and I think I'm gonna go through and add just a bunch of tiny little rebels just little bits of uh, styrene wherever because at the moment it looks, it looks a little too plain I think a little too smooth it needs just something more to break up the surface but this is what we have right now and model is going to be positioned something like this about like that so um, originally I was thinking about uh, adjusting the landing gear the height of the landing gear based on where it's sitting on the model but instead what I think I'm going to do is just add little braces wherever the landing gear touches so everything's at an even height so I still got to glue the landing gear down and figure out um, where everything's going to go. So like one's going to be here, I think I'll just add a little block of styrene so everything is at the same even keel. Uh, when the model's actually on, you won't see them. So uh, it shouldn't be an issue visually. Alright, here is my base. Um, I think I just finished it uh, a couple minutes ago. Uh, last time you saw it, I had a bit different bits along here and here. Um, I decided to pull those off. I felt they were just way too out of scale with the ship. They were pretty big. And uh, what I did instead is just I cut up massive amounts of styrene of all different shapes and sizes. A whole bunch of really tiny strips. Some other ones around here. There's a little lots of these I cut up and I just started gluing those everywhere you can see them all over the place here on the edges see them really well over here this is a piece from my X-Wing model the other project and just little greebly bits all over the place nothing really definite to what it is it's just doohickeys and thingamabobbers so I got a couple pieces from the uh, the Morser kit that the uh, figures came from, and that's about it. Uh, not all of this is accurate to the model, but who cares? It looks good. So the base is now done. There's a few areas where I'm filling in some putty, 
and I gotta go through and sand some areas and I see some of these lines are not very straight I'm gonna trim those up and uh, a little bit of filing to be done so uh, there's that done and now I have the landing gear on the bottom of the model so uh, what I decided to do is just build the model I mean excuse me build the base and just pray that uh, I could adjust the landing gear, or excuse me, adjust the base to where the landing gear sits. And I was very fortunate that um, the places where the gear fits sits, um, I didn't have any big pieces I had to then break off or adjust. Leg spots, I got them marked with a pencil, I'm not sure if you can see that, but here, 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 here. The big one was right here. Uh, this wasn't just an empty recessed channel that I had to raise. Um, so I ended up building just a block here and then detailing it out with uh, styrene. So the exact placement, final placement is not set yet and I still have the drill holes for the magnets that are going to go inside the base. But that's what we got here. Get you a standing shot of it. And there we are. Getting, getting the home stretch here. Forgot to mention one thing that I wanted to point out on the model. Uh, I was complaining earlier about the symmetry, the, the, the symmetrical, symmetry, that's the word I'm looking for. The symmetry of the base, how it's not very visually appealing. So uh, when I was doing the detail work, all the accurizing with those small styrene bits, uh, I made sure to try to keep it different on from one side of the model to the other as much as possible to make it more visually appealing. So you see this is the same shape here, but I've altered the uh, locations and the types of different bits on both sides. Uh, part of this is due to how the uh, Star Destroyer looks, and but most of it's just due to my personal taste. So you have, you have symmetry, like this piece here, it's all the same, but then there's some slight differences on each side, especially here it's all made of the same bits, but uh, they're in different locations, different sizes. And here you got two here, then just one up here, and then one down here to break up the whole look of it. Okay, check it out. Base is pretty much done. Um, primed it, airbrushed it. I used a mixture of uh, Tamiya paints. I used about 80% white and 20% uh, light gray. Um, it's a good thing I checked my reference because the Star Destroyer is a lot lighter in color than I thought. I thought it was a lot more blue, but it's almost, it's very close to a pure white. Um, so the, uh, what I'm doing is I'm trying to keep it still in the blue tone. So uh, the light gray is a cold gray, meaning it has like a blue tint to it. And then the Millennium Falcon I'm going to paint with uh, sky gray more than likely, which is a, a warmer tone. It has sort of a brown tint to it, and uh, that'll give good contrast between the two grays. So um, I sprayed it with about a 50-50 mix, and then I went over with the 80-20 the mix, and I sprayed it from the top, because it is supposed to be a vertical scene. So basically I just went from this way and just airbrushed down, so there's a bit more shade in these areas, where uh, well, mainly here actually it's the best place it picks up here. Um, so that gives a bit of a shadow to it coming downwards. Um, I, it looked a little plain so then I went back and um, made a mixture of about 75-25 um, to add a bit more just a contrast to it, not necessarily shadow but contrast between the different parts and just using a piece of paper as a template all along the hard edges I added a bit more shadow. You can see Here, very obvious. There, it's very obvious, and especially along the edges here, right there. And I kept going back and forth. Some places went too dark, so then I added more white, and it was too white. Then I wanted to shadow a bit more, so I probably mixed up the color about eight different times, just adjusting it to the way I like the uh, way I wanted to look. It's about 90% done right now. Uh, it still needs to uh, dry. I think I'm going to maybe add um, a bit more shade by using some uh, MIG enamel washes in certain areas. 
mainly like these areas here. I could tape it off and spray it, but I think it would just be easier if I just put a, a wash in there. There's just a bit more contrast. But uh, there we go. Uh, the magnets are in. I, dr I was able to drill those out with a uh, drill bit very easily and slide the magnets in. Uh, I'd like to put the uh, Falcon on right now and show you, but I literally just finished painting this five minutes ago, and it's the paint's very soft right now, and I don't want to scratch it. But uh, there we are. Finally, paint on something. All right, here we have one fully completed Millennium Falcon Fine Molds Model 144 scale. Uh, I just finished the detailing, um, the last bits of it, and uh, I'm finally deciding to call it quits here. Uh, I could go around and add a bunch more detailing, but uh, I've reached the limit of my patience. So uh, next time you see this, hopefully it's going to have paint on it. Uh, just want to make one more video going through all the extra detailing that I've added since I've last showed it to you. Um, just start over here since this is where it is. Uh, this, oh geez, I don't know what to call it. Whatever this area is, I added a few little greebles I noticed uh, on the original model. Each side had a few, so um, I just added some very tiny small pieces of styrene. And then actually I went back uh, once they were dry and sanded them down. Uh, so they match the scale of these a bit better. There's a, a little raised area here that was missing on the kit, so I just added a small piece of styrene there. Uh, one thing I did want to point out was I noticed that these are wrong, all these little uh, seams in this piece. Most of them are wrong. Uh, in several areas it's supposed to go up like a little notch is out in the middle and then it goes back down and across. Um, it's something I could have fixed but it's more time and I wasn't really willing to go through it. Um, if I had more time I'd probably redo this all in uh, styrene, cut it out little thin strips of styrene and basically rebuild the, all these plates. But that did not happen. Let's see, moving around here. Small piece of plumbing that's supposed to be here, I added that. No biggie. I added a few little bits of styrene in here inside the mandibles. Actually, I, I, I don't know if that's there, but it was just such a flat spot I wanted to add something because it looked too plain. There's a little squiggle thing in the front of the kit that I just added uh, a resemblance of it. This is not a, an accurate portrayal of it, but it's just a square of styrene with a circle underneath it. So there's something there. Spinning around here. Oh. Added some detailing here. Again, it's not entirely accurate. There's something there. I couldn't figure out exactly what, but there's something there now. Uh, there's supposed to be two tubes, plumbing tubes here, and I had a problem building two, and I got a little frustrated, so I just built one. So I have a small styrene uh, block here, which is a styrene rod with some small square bits on the side and then the tube going in it. Uh, there is a little block here that was a tank track on the original model so I detailed that up a bit with some small styrene. There's a little block here that I added again same as on the other side all those little square styrene bits. Now uh, the holes I was drilling that I kept breaking the drill bits on I, tried, I decided to give it one more uh, chance and I put the drill bit inside my power drill, my cordless power drill, to drill it out. And I finally managed to do this while breaking bits. Uh, the cordless drill goes slow enough so it's not going to melt the plastic, but it's fast enough where instead of doing it by hand with hand movements, uh, the drill bit did not break. So finally got all these holes drilled out. I even did some extremely small ones right here. Oh. Um, on the side here, there's just a few little tiny bits that were missing, so I added these, as well as a couple more here. Again, not all these are 100% accurate toward the kit, but there were blank spots and I wanted to add some more detail to them. Back here, there's two little plates here that are supposed to be, uh, they have like a texture to them that's missing from the kit, and I happen to have some uh, styrene, I think this is... Um, 
metal siding, they call it. So I cut it down to shape. Um, the styrofoam was a bit thick, so I did have to sand it down quite a lot. And I just glued that over the square that was there. Same thing as here. There's supposed to be a little angle piece that was missing entirely. So I cut one for there. Oh, and can't forget the big one. So the landing gear added. And I decided as a last minute addition to add all the... Uh, the plumbing that hangs from the landing gear bays. There's a lot of this hanging from uh, any of the scene shots where they're outside the ship, you can see them. I kind of wanted to add, since I went through all this, I wanted to add the uh, the landing gear doors, but uh, the original ones that came with the kit, it doesn't actually come with landing gear, but comes with, um, if you don't want to put the landing gear on, you get little uh, blank spots to cover up the holes. I'm trying to find one. Ah, here we go. There's one. Is that one of them? Yeah, that's one of them. Uh, I would have liked to cut these in half and then glue these to, as open doors. Unfortunately, I chopped up some of these while making uh, the uh, Death Star base. So I lost one or two. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave those off unfortunately. I could scratch build them but it'd be a lot of work and um, I'm, I'm through with it. All right, so that's it. The radar dish got a bit of detailing as well. There was a little greeble detail here that was actually sunken into the model as a little uh, sink mark so cut that off, filled it up and added the greeble back in. Uh, there's some little details back here that I had to add and there was also some small greebles on the dish itself that got added. The gun turrets, the top one here, I didn't go out and detail this to the max um, but I just wanted to add some extra detail to it so again I got that metal siding stuff in here and then the resemblance of the tube you go down once it's in the uh, kit the shadow itself is going to sh shade all that so you won't be able to see too far in. The uh, I'm leaving this apart for painting so I can paint the inside. So this is all remaining off. I'm trying to find the notch. Where this goes and there we go. And then the guns uh, I'm leaving those off as well. Because if I add the guns, I have to add the sheet, and then it also is going to be really hard to get off the uh, the masking. So I'm just going to leave this all in pieces. All right. One last thing I want to show: the masking for the windows. I was complaining a while back about the masking sheet they give you that it's uh, it's not pre-cut, and then it doesn't stick very well. To uh, these pieces, just kept pulling off, and I had to go over with uh, liquid latex to seal them down. So for the canopy here what I did was I just took some uh, Tamiya masking tape and I, this pulls off very easily so I put, put it between the two sheets and then I went through and cut them out and then used the, styro, the uh, Tamiya tape to mask off the window here. Worked a lot better. That is it. Uh, I am going to go prime this right now, so hopefully next time you see it, we'll have some paint. Alright, uh, welcome to uh, Change the Scenery. Painting the Falcon finally, airbrushing it. Uh, this is my very crappy homemade uh, airbrush box. Spray a box until I could get something uh, better made, or purchased I should say. So, um, here's the Falcon. It's been primed with uh, Tamiya Gray Primer, which is actually a very, very nice color. It's almost the color I want to paint the, uh, the final model in. Uh, so this is all primed, and then I went around all the edges for um, some shading with uh, neutral gray. So I'm using, basically, I'm using this as a template of where I want the shadows to be. Um, and I got a thin mixture in my airbrush currently. It is about, I'd say, 75% sky gray and 25% white. So now I'm just going to be doing the uh, 
airbrushing process here. The uh, idea is I'm going to do it kind of blotchy just so some of the primer still kind of shows through in some parts so there will be a nice variation of uh, color and that's going to be highlighted a lot once they start putting all the, uh, the weathering details on it later. Here we go. Okay, the uh, base coat's done now. Looks probably looks just about the same uh, as you saw before. It's a slightly lighter color than the primer, but it's uh, pretty close to what I wanted. There's still some shade around some of the areas where I wanted to keep it, and it's not a 100% uh, perfect coat, which is exactly what I needed. All right, now I'm gonna add um, some highlights. I'm gonna do that just a real basic way. I'm gonna use a piece of paper here as a template. And just hold it up to the edge where I want a little bit more definition. Gotta make sure I do get this just right. You can see it, hopefully you can see the definition, there's a bit of a white line there. Let's do it to the other side. Actually, I'm going to let this dry for a minute. Um, I think I may want to add a bit more white to the mix. Um, paints tend to dry differently. They tend to go darker once they're dry. So, actually, I'm going to wait a couple minutes to see how this looks. And um, I may have to add some more white to the airbrush. I'll just have to wait and see to be sure. So, uh, let you know what I do when you get back. I need to mask up and uh, finish this, so see you in a bit. Alright, here is the Falcon. It's all painted, highlighted, and I hate it. Um, I thought it was finished, and then I put it together with the base, and I realized I made a mistake here. Um, where I'm airbrushing, I'm under fluorescent lights, which give it, gives everything a yellow tone. And where I paint, um, I'm under a... Uh, it's not a daylight bulb, but uh, what do you call it? It's a, it's, it's a more natural light bulb, um, which tends to turn things a bit more blue. And when I took the Falcon over to my painting desk, it completely changed color. It basically matched virtually the color of the base. And right now when I'm under fluorescent lights, and you can see there's a slight difference, but even still, it's, it's a lot cooler than I wanted. It's also a lot lighter than it should be. Um, so I'm going to repaint the whole thing now after finishing it. Um, I'm going to experiment a few colors. I'm going to try the sky gray again, just use straight without adding white. And I may actually add a touch of brown to it, uh, maybe some khaki to uh, actually brown it up a bit more because, I mean, even though like gray might be the right color, I, I need a visually different color from the base, and the more visually different it is, the better. So uh, I may go very warm on this. Uh, but I'm go going to uh, experiment with a few colors, start with the sky gray, and work my way from there, and then go back and do this again. And when I add the highlights, which you can see, they're very obvious now. Uh, they are a bit too uh, stark. Now. Um, the other thought I should mention is that um, this thing is going to be he heavily weathered with some filters and other stuff which would darken 
the tone of uh, the ship and turn it a bit more brown but I don't think it's going to um, darken it to the look to the point that I want so um, that's the reason why I'm repainting it I'd rather have it closer to what my uh, ideal color is from the start rather than trying to cross my fingers and hope that uh, filters and washes darken it so that's it uh, back to square one all right, here's the uh, Painted Falcon, take two. Um, I did go back and repaint the entire thing. Uh, what I ended up using was uh, sky gray, pretty much straight, with just a very faint hint of khaki, probably less than 10% when I finally decided on the right mixture. Um, I also went back and used black instead of neutral gray along all the edges. And that actually worked out extremely well. If I had to do it again, I would have painted the whole thing black because uh, the sky gray over the black gave like the perfect tone of what I was looking for. Uh, unfortunately, it was only in the recesses and I would have liked to see it all over the place. But anyway, after applying that, and then I redid the edges again, uh, this time by adding white and um, about an equal mixture of buff as well. So that kept uh, some of the warmth in the gray that I was looking for. Uh, it still looks... Uh, different under this light. Um, it looks a lot better under the fluorescent lights that I painted under. Um, that's extremely odd. I know uh, that colors tend to look different under certain lights. I've known that for years, but I've never seen it so dramatically played out. Um, I guess when you're working with grays and they just have that slight tint, that warm or cold tint, uh, the, color of, the color of the light you're under really affects it. But um, I'm not sure how this looked to you uh, when I showed it to you at, at the painting station, the airbrush booth. But now, you should see a fairly, fairly decent difference between the two colors. It's a lot more obvious under the fluorescent lights, but even under this uh, slightly more natural lighting that I work under. And I'm looking at the screen right now, there's definitely a difference I can see. Hopefully you'll see it once this video is uploaded. And then once, of course, I do all the washes and I'm going to do a little fading, that's going to darken the whole thing. And I'm going to have to gloss coat it at some point to um, when I start doing the fading. And uh, if what happens, what I think happened when I was doing the base for my uh, X-Wing, just putting the gloss coat over it because that extra moisture so to say and that it adds to the paint really darkens it so this should probably darken a bit more still which uh, will be good okay I need to let this dry at least overnight before I start masking and painting all the colors there's all the the dark gray colors uh, the, the red the dark red and the yellow that need to go on and you know what just looking at this decal sheet real quick I know this is totally wrong because I've been looking at reference photos for so long and I know there's a heck of a lot more yellow than is here. So uh, this is going to be totally useless. I wasn't going to use it anyway, but I was going to use it as a template. But there's definitely a lot more uh, colored parts on this model than are actually on this sheet. Okay, that is it. As you can see, I... Uh, started on all the color panels on the Falcon model hence the massive amounts of tape I already did the gray, the dark gray portions you can see some of them I covered up most of them but well you get those two there uh, that was neutral gray which is actually the color the kit suggests and actually turned out to be pretty good which is shock shocking <laughs> right now I'm working on the red so I've gotten everything taped up for that and the red is uh, it's very it has a lot of wear on it it's, uh, for some reason the gray isn't scratched up on the model but uh, the red is I don't know why but uh, so I'm working on how to do all the scratches right now and originally I was planning on using masking fluid which is actually just uh, liquid latex but uh, and just 
putting that on with a toothpick and then spraying the red and then peeling off the mask. However, it's a bit too um, uh, smooth. What's the word I'm looking for? It just it kind of tends to come out when you put it down into like just a, a perfectly round blob, and that's not what I want. I want more scratches. So another idea is to use the hairspray technique, which I've used in the past, but I haven't used it in this fashion. Uh, I have heard that you can take uh, spray paint, uh, excuse me, not uh, hairspray, in an aerosol can, and by spraying it into a little cup, and then using a brush, you can brush it on, which I'm going to try right now. First time doing this. Ugh. That smells lovely. Hope I don't have hairspray all over my lens now. <coughs> okay, I think I got to do this pretty quick. Oops. I put on a bit thinner. I don't want it running. Don't want it to run underneath the tape. Um, it's taking up my paint. All right, that's not going to work. Why is it taking peeling up my paint? Okay, um, I don't know what the hell's going on. Let's, uh, <laughs> I screwed up. Okay, so the, uh, brushing on the hairspray did not work. It, uh, simply just peeled up the paint underneath. Um, I'm not really sure why that happened. I've seen it used before, um, and that wasn't, that didn't happen. Uh, and I've sprayed it before, um, but I never sprayed and then touched it. So I, I don't know. I don't know what caused that. But uh, I decided to skip it, and I'm going to use a bit more basic technique here, uh, a little bit more barbaric. I sprayed the red. <clears throat> it's uh, a mix of to me, uh, to me, uh, red, whole red, and then with a little bit of uh, yellow added to give it a more not orange feel to but a little more uh ah oh boy what's the word I'm looking for um well it's, a, it's supposed to be russet red is the match and by adding those colors together I think that's that's what I got so anyway now for the scratches um the paint's just barely dry so I'm going to simply just scratch it off and just using some tweezers here being as delicate as I can since the paint's still fresh this is fairly easy I do risk scratching all the way through to the base coat, but since it's gray plastic and it's somewhat similar to the color of my base coat, I'm okay with that. There we go. Trying to be as delicate as I can. Okay, this is working out pretty well. I don't appear to be going all the way through uh, to the bare plastic. <clears throat> so one thing that might have fixed that problem with the uh, brushing on the hairspray could possibly have been uh, applying a, um, a varnish before uh, doing the hairspray, which might have worked. But I already had this all masked up and I didn't want to spray a varnish over the mask to risk it uh, running along the paint lines and causing marks. Same reason why I didn't want to spray the hairspray. Because I've had that happen before and it created a quite a bit of a mess. Okay. 
I'm going to have to pull up some of the mass so I get the edges here. And let me do it on this piece. There we go, that's looking pretty good. Too shabby. Looks like I managed to save it from the hairspray fiasco because I wasn't sure this was going to work as well as it is. Okay, um, well, anyway, that's it. Uh, I gotta go through, do this, and then I gotta mask off the bottom and uh, spray the red again. I'm trying to get that done today so uh, I don't have to mix up that red color again. Since once you start getting mixing three colors together, it's kind of hard to mix the exact same shade back up. And then once I'm done with that, I can do the yellow, and then I may have one more step I have to mask off. I haven't decided if I'm doing that yet. Alright, see you soon. Alright, here we are. Um, I'm done with all the uh, little color panel work, thankfully. I uh, managed to crank it all out in pretty much one extremely long day. Got the, all the red, gray, reds all scuffed up, and I thought there was more yellow, but apparently there is only two spots. I couldn't find a whole lot of pictures of the underneath of the model, the original studio model, but uh, all I found was two. I could have sworn there were more. Uh, I'm thinking maybe it was the, uh, I think the uh, landing ramp here had some yellow in it, uh, but that would be on the inside. So uh, I'm not bothering with that, obviously. I uh, did mess up a few spots where I didn't mask well enough. Uh, luckily, the base color I used is almost a perfect match for with uh, Vallejo light gray. The yellow, especially, um, I mixed up a little bit too thin and it ran and I had to clean up the bottom and hopefully you can't see anything there, which means it's a perfect match, especially after it gets weathered. A perfect match. Long ago, in one of the videos, I said I was going to snap one of these tiny little uh, styrene pieces and I was right. Uh, I just once I finished I realized one disappeared at some point so I replaced that and I'll paint that over with the yellow and I also lost one of the metal ones here luckily it was clean I managed to glue it right back in it's a little wet now with accelerant. Now the next step is more color paneling um, there's, there's the dark gray, there's the red, and there's the yellow, but if you look at the studio scale model, uh, I'll put a link in the description for uh, studioscale.com, that's one website I've been using mainly for reference photos, and if you look at the 32 inch uh, studio scale Millennium Falcon, apart from all the red, the, the dark gray, and the yellow, you'll notice there's several other uh, different colors of panels that are etched in all around here. I'm looking at one of the photos here, there's like a panel. There's definitely a line here and then it goes down and this whole piece or right here is all slightly different color from the base tone. Uh, it looks like it has a slightly darker, slightly more warm look to it. There's a little square right here, a few other ones in random spots. It really breaks up the gray of the model and gives it a nice uh, modded effect which I really like. Um, 
and actually I'm looking at the photo right now, I'm grabbing some other pieces. There's definitely different a discoloration right here on this piece. So plan is to put all that in. Um, I think I'm going to take the original base color I mixed up of uh, sky gray and khaki. I still have some of that left. And I'm going to try mixing just a tiny amount of buff into it. And I just want a slight difference in color from the base coat. So that will be the next step. Um, hopefully I could get that done uh, this evening still. It's getting kind of late though. And I haven't studied exactly how many panels I'll have to mask off. Uh, then once that's done, I'm going to be able to gloss coat this whole thing and start with the washing. Get on to the fun weathering step. It's going to be good. Alright, here we go. Um, I finally finished the final uh, panel paint color. Um, I went with sky gray and I added... I ended, added up ending quite a bit of buff. More than I actually was planning initially. Um, I put the, I put it on first and I didn't see much difference and then I added a bit more buff and I was telling myself no don't do it it's going to be too much and uh, I'm not sure if it's too much or not it is standing out a bit more than I thought it was um, hopefully when all the weathering comes out uh, it will tone it down but it's, it's not too far off so I'm not horribly upset with it but there you go so so I couldn't find too much uh, reference pictures of this side of the model on the 38 uh, inch, 32 inch studio scale. So I kind of used my imagination on some parts here just to balance it out because there's so many over here on this section where I do have reference. Alright, the next step is I gotta start uh, washing it and before I do that I gotta put a uh, clear coat on the model, a gloss coat, That'll, that helps to wash flow better so it's just going to fall into the recesses which is what I want uh, all the panel weathering I'm going to be doing with pastels so I don't want the wash to uh, settle on the uh, flat surfaces and darken them too much right now now for the gloss coat I like to use uh, Model Masters Testers Acryl this is semi gloss my gloss bottle is stored somewhere else at the moment but this is the same brand uh, it works pretty good uh, about three coats of this and you get a super slick surface. It's uh, great for uh, washes or even um, decals. It's super smooth. It's really harsh on uh, the airbrush though, though, trying to clean it out. I mean, if you use this, you got to break the airbrush completely down to uh, get everything out. Otherwise, it's just going to lock up the needle. Um, I am, am looking for a better acrylic varnish that I put through an airbrush if anyone has any suggestions. Um, I've heard that Future Floor Wax, Future Floor Polish, works very well. And I have a knockoff brand of it. I'm not sure if it's the same stuff, but I tried it in the airbrush and I just don't like it. It, like, it beads up too fast and it runs. Um, I'm not sure if the actual Future would work better or not, but uh, if you have any suggestions, let me know. So. Uh, let me go gloss coat this and get started on the washing. Oh, there's one thing I forgot. Um, the engine grills in the back here, I forgot to paint those. And I wanted to tell you how to do that. Um, I just painted with uh, the airbrush and black paint. And what I have here is a uh, small circle template. And this is a uh, old trick for painting uh, wheel hubs on tires or uh, road wheels on tanks is you just find the proper size circle and then you tape off around it and then you just use it as a quick spray template with your airbrush. So you just put it on there, spray and you to go. This is a bit recessed so it's uh, not as clean as it would be if I was doing like a road wheel where I could just push it right up against uh, the template here but that's fine, it's gonna, it needs to be dirty anyway so it works out uh, just as well. So, quickie tip. Back to the uh, gloss varnish. So starting on the uh, weathering process with the Falcon, um, I have already gloss coated it with uh, Tester's Acryl through the airbrush. Uh, before that though I forgot I had some details I had to paint. Uh, there's some 
small little markings uh, on the model that I almost forgot to add. The main ones being the, uh, the small red lines right here and there's a little triangle shape above the cockpit. Also I added a few more just here and there in small spots. So small I forgot where I put them now. Like right there. There's um, a lot of these on the five foot model but uh, since I'm not trying to recreate that I try to uh, do it as minimally as possible. I wanted to put them all over tiny little spots but they're not on the 30 uh, two inch so had to hold her back. So I'm doing uh, the weathering now, the wash. It's the MIGS enamel wash. I made up my own mix. This is about 80% dark wash with a bit more brown added, just a little bit. Now I did the same thing with the X-Wing but for that one I slathered it on and I want something a bit cleaner for this one. I may do a second wash but right now I just got a really dark one because I want to highlight all these panel lines so um, instead of just using a big brush and slopping it on I'm doing what's called a pin wash being a bit more careful about it now the benefit of the gloss coat is it makes the wash flow really good so I just have to basically touch it to the seams and it will just flow along. If I used a flat wash or I didn't varnish it, this wouldn't flow as well. few spots where the wash went where I don't want it so just clean the brush with a little thinner and all I do is just brush away the excess now this is the way you normally wash something that uh, you wouldn't want horribly dirty like I did on the X-Wing And this is like really good for tanks. We basically you just want to add definition and not dirt using the wash. There will be some streaking, which is good for this model. And I'm trying to make sure I get it all going in the down direction, which is going to be the same way all the dirt and grime is flowing when uh, I get to that portion of the weathering process. Okay, so there we are. Fairly quick, quick and easy. I'm gonna do this, and um, I'm not sure. I may add a secondary lighter wash, a brown wash, on some of the areas. Or after this, I might go to the fading stage or the filtering stage. I'm not a hundred percent sure exactly what method I'm going to use to uh, add some more weathering to this model. See you soon. Just want to give you a quick update here. I uh, wasn't planning on recording this but I figured I'm doing something so might as well. Uh, the wash is done. I did the dark wash mixed with a little bit of brown all over it. Um, and I just about finished that up. I'm using some brown on the sides but I was starting to feel that A, the model was getting too dark and the wash wasn't giving the depth I wanted. It felt like I was starting to lose the details. There wasn't enough contrast between it. So uh, right now I'm going around and dry brushing very carefully, especially on the back portion here, dry brushing all the raised details. The concern is, since I already have the wash on which changed the tint of the uh, the main base coat if I screw something up here I'm hosed 
because I can't go back and cover it up. It's going to stand out like a sore thumb. So I'm doing this with the smallest, tiniest amount hint of paint on the brush. I'm using a mix of, uh, it's mostly Vallejo pale sand and just with a little bit of gray to tone it, light gray to tone it down. And scrubbing a whole bunch on a t-shirt get out all the excess because I'd rather have too little on the brush than too much. If I get too much and I get one little tiny streak on here hosed. I'm going to do this on the sides as well but I just put a wash on there and I still have to wipe that off and I'm not going to dare do this where it's still wet because then that's that's going to be real bad. So I got to be very careful of the uh, or the piping that I don't break that off. I was going to do this earlier at some point and I don't know what happened. If I changed my mind or I thought it didn't need it or I just totally forgot. But yeah, I should have done this like right after I did the base coat. Because now is not the good, best time to do it. Okay, uh, so that's all I'm doing right now. Quick update. Uh, I added some brown wash on the sides here, you see, in just spots. Um, this is going to be reinforced with some uh, rust washes, which I'll show you eventually how that's going to happen. But there's a lot of rust on the sides. Uh, the brown is actually too brown. All these, uh, all this needs to be more orange, but it's going to be redefined by that uh, that rust wash I'm going to add eventually. But this will get some more uh, tone variation in it. That is all. Okay, uh, when I last left off, I was doing the uh, mix and the wash. And that's all done now. Brought out all the little seam lines. Really nice. It's looking good. And uh, I let that dry uh, about 36 hours or so. And I coated it again in the tester's uh, gloss varnish. And now I'm working on oil fading. Um, this is something I've tried a couple times before and it didn't work. Uh, but I've uh, learned a lot more since then, so I'm trying it again. And I have tested it out on a few spots of the model already, towards the back, to make sure I don't have that uh, brush on hairspray fiasco I did in the last video, because that was bad. So. Here's where I've already done the oil fading. Uh, the purpose of this is to break up the monotony of the colors used. It's used quite often on armor models. Um, so it gives it a bit more gradual gradation of color to it. Uh, so you can see, oh, hopefully you can see, if I get this close enough. This is all one color gray panel and I've gone through with a little gray oil paint and some brown and white and added some streaks all along. And on this side here I had a bit more, I added a little yellow to it. Hang to see. That's not from the enamel wash, that's from the, the oil fading. Okay, I'm gonna readjust the camera here because you gotta get pretty close to see what's going on. Alright. It's almost so close I can't see what I'm doing now. So, here's my oil paints. One thing I learned recently is uh, to put them on a piece of paper and when you do that the uh, extra linseed oil in the paint gets absorbed by the paper and it's supposed to be easier to work with. So I'm giving that a shot. I got my odorless thinner here. I got my two brushes, one for application, one for feathering. And the important part, the model. Now one thing I didn't do before is try this over a gloss coat and this does Doing it over gloss coat does help a lot more. When I tried over flat, uh, the lighter colors, especially the white, just got absorbed 
right away and just stain the paint and that's not happening this time. So here's how it works. You take a little tiny dab of paint and you just kind of make dots just about wherever. Clean the brush, get another color. The idea is to get the uh, lighter color paints towards, towards the top and the darker ones towards the middle. And try not to overlay and don't put one on top of another. That was a unbleached titanium I just put on there. The gray was one I mixed up my own because I don't have any gray oil paint. I don't have too many of these. So as I said, I haven't been able to successfully do it before. And we got Okay, sorry for the uh, interruption there. My, uh, my batteries died, so I'm going to change them real fast. These are showing half full. Hopefully they last through at least this part. Um, I'm not sure when the film cut out. Uh, I got the gray mix on the bottom that I was doing. I got the unbleached titanium in the middle, and I got the white on top. Final color is, um, I think this is a raw sienna. It's a very rusty looking brown. We're going to add just a few of those, especially to any little greebled knickknacks. It kind of looks like rust going down. And one more. I think this is a raw. Umber, it's very dark brown. Now wait, raw, raw is the red. There you go. This is the burnt. Let's add this to a few spots. Nothing major. All right. Next part, I'm gonna take my flat brush with a little thinner on it. All right. It's the next day after I tried adding uh, the oil fading, and fortunately. As you're probably aware now, I had some battery problems with my camera. Uh, my main set died. I have a backup set of rechargeables, but uh, apparently those are dead because I just charged them up and they were, weren't working. And I tried throwing some alkalines in my camera and they didn't work at all. Which, um, don't know why. Uh, unfortunately, I could not, um, I didn't want to stop the whole oil process, so I just had to do it all off camera. Um, I'm pretty disappointed because I really wanted to show that off. First of all, because it's, it's a new technique. Maybe you know, not all of you have seen it. And secondly, I wanted, hopefully people who've done it before, to uh, take a look at how I do it because I don't think I do it all that well. And I was hoping for some advice. But, um, oh well. So it's done now. Put on the tiny drops of paint and use a slightly moist brush to draw them down. You can see some streaks here. It's not super strong. Like I said, I'm not very good at this. It does give a good um, kind of a matte look to the whole model. Um, I really like using this on uh, this technique on armor models because you gloss coat it and then you do the uh, the oil fading and you don't need to flat it afterwards. Right, it, it just gives such a like a good just hue to the model. So, um, anyway, that's it. It's all done. I'm still going to varnish this uh, because I need to put the pastels on. I want to make sure I get a dead flat surface to put those on. Um, so, what's left? Uh, after I did the oil fading, uh, I felt that some parts I darkened up too much, especially back here, since I couldn't do the uh, the streaking down. I basically did an oil wash and blended it in. I darkened it too much, I think, so I went back and did a little more dry brushing here and a few other spots. Um, what I'm going to work on now, I think I'm going to add a bit more paint chipping to uh, various parts of the model using sponge. I can't remember if I showed this to you uh, in an earlier video or not, but it's just a piece of uh, sea sponge that I'm going to uh, dip some paint in and touch it around. Um, just get some more chips all over the model, especially the main gray areas and the dark grays. I thought the dark grays were not chipped initially, but in fact they are. Uh, then when that's done, 
hopefully I can flat varnish this and then work on the final step with steps which is the pastels and that will be it we are getting very close thankfully here we go here we go here we go getting down uh, to pretty much, well actually it is the last step, I was about to say a few last steps, but we're down the last step. Um, uh, where did I leave off? Um, I did a bit of uh, modding on the uh, modeling, m m model ling I, the spongy thing, you know. So um, took some dark rust, Vallejo dark rust, and did a little sponging on the model. Um, I try not to go too much. Uh, I think I was getting to the point where I was adding too much weathering and I started to obscure the uh, weathering underneath. Um, sorry I didn't film that. I just wanted to get it done. And then also I did some light uh, spot washes and a few spots here with, uh, I think that was uh, Vallejo uh, Panzerace's Light Rust. And um, clear coated it. And now I'm in the process of adding some pigments. Um, I made a, a pigment wash out of uh, some odorless thinner and MIG's uh, standard rust. So, mixing it up really well. And basically this flows like a wash, but then when it dries, it dries very uh, soft. Also, if I don't like it, I could remove it somewhat. Just a few spots. There's a lot of rust on the sides, so... I'm going to add just a little bit now, because I already did the other side, and I think I went too far. So, little bits go a long way. I always add more if I need more. And once I'm satisfied with this, I'm going to go on and apply some dry pigments. Especially to the top where all that streaking is. But uh, I wanted to use the wash here because it gives a better effect, I think, for uh, what I'm trying to uh, achieve. And it gets in all those little crevices. I'm going to add just a little bit. And some of the recesses on top. This is going to get a heavy uh, amount of uh, black pigment in there, so it actually may not come up. But if it does, give a nice uh, tone, variance of tone. And let's add a little bit to the back too. Here, little there. I was applying some of this before I started. And some of this is already uh, dried. It's almost dried there. It's a little flaky. I'm going to have to uh, go back in with a dry brush and feather it out a bit. I'm actually not sure that the oldest thinner thins well with uh, make pigments. I tried it with regular pastels and it's worked a lot better. This is kind of clumping up. I'll go ahead and show you this. I wasn't planning on but I think you just spotted it. Um, I applied a bit too much to this side and I tried to uh, wipe it off and just kind of spread out. Uh, so I'm going to be dry brushing over this to hide it a bit. But, uh, that's how it looks dry. A little too much rust on that side. 
All right, um, I screwed up the model. Unfortunately, um, the pastel pigment wash just didn't work. Um, put on a bit too much, and then I tried just feathering it out, and it stuff just spreads, doesn't actually come off. Um, I've done it before, which is regular pastel ground up, and it worked a lot better. So I don't know what the deal is. Uh, I tried dry brushing over it, and that just smears it more. So I thought about uh, spraying it with uh, the flat coat again, then doing it, and then I decided, well, if I have to break out the uh, airbrush again, I might as well just repaint the sides and hopefully cover up most of it. So I'm going to think about it for a little bit, but uh, that may be the plan now, just completely uh, repaint the sides, mask it off, repaint, and um, go from there back with the original wash again and dry brush. Uh, well, I thought I was done. Luckily the sides are uh, pretty... Uh, there's an obvious, obvious edge. So masking it off and repainting, it's not going to cause too much problems, I hope. Again, I hope. Fortunately, this is what usually happens when I'm painting. I get the thing about 80% done, and then I start screwing things up. And I just get so frustrated, I just toss the model. Um, this happens more than once, unfortunately. It's the way I do things. But I'm going to still try to get this done. So if uh, the airbrush doesn't come out right, then I'm going to toss the model because that's going to be the last uh, straw. Okay, uh, just a quick update. I um, want to let you know I did airbrush the original gray back over uh, the screwed up uh, pastel wash. And uh worked pretty good. A lot of the pastel is still showing through. I used the uh, paint rather thin. So I was afraid of uh, overspray. But uh, once I put all the wash, the dark wash on again, this should hopefully get uh, covered up even better. I hope. So here we are, uh, pretty much back to the beginning. Um, the, uh, the rust wash MIGS pigment thing didn't work out, so I did decide to repaint the uh, sides, in case I didn't say that earlier. I don't know, I'm editing this video yet. Um, so I repainted them, and then I washed them. I was trying to skip the gloss coat, uh, hoping it wouldn't matter, but it did. So then I went back and I repainted it again, and while I was at it, I repainted some of the panels. That wasn't too happy with, and there was some other pigments to put on top. I decided to put some paint on there, and so basically I'm back to the weathering step stage one. Uh, I put the gloss coat on, and then I reapplied the uh, the MIG dark pigment, dark wash, excuse me. And that's as the model sits right now. Um, I think I managed to save it from uh, being destroyed though, because. Um, before I just did a panel wash and then I wiped it off with the uh, the uh, odorless thinner and uh, this time I didn't I just let it dry and I just rubbed it off uh, with a heck of a lot of q-tips and that darkened it a bit more left a bit more of the wash around and um, that actually worked out pretty well for the weathering my uh, oil fading technique is all gone but that's okay uh, what's left is still fine. Um, what I decided to do now was add some paint chips. Um, I was doing it before with sponge and it just wasn't looking right. I didn't like it too much. So I'm going to do it the hard way and paint all the paint chips by hand. Which is a whole lot of fun and it takes forever. But it's going to give me the best effects. So once again I'm breaking out the light gray and pale sand and we're going to do some chips alright I got my paint mixed up for the uh, paint chips I need the paint just slightly thinned uh, I want it fairly 
a little thick so the chips will hold its shape now they always say more is less when doing paint chips but I think in the case of Millennium Falcon uh, more is more so um, this isn't 100% accurate but it looks good so I'm working along the edges and what that does is kind of highlights them and gives you more contrast before, uh, between the, uh, the the wash and the recesses and the panels the hard part is keeping these from looking symmetrical in the past what I found I kept doing was getting into a rhythm like coming a little song here going da 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 and all the chips end up looking like the same so I purposely do these at different times that one went a little too deep, I have to clean it up later I want the big ones towards the edges and then some small ones as they spread out I always try to break up the rhythm do like two big ones and some little ones around then one big one and then surround it the little ones I like to turn the brush sometimes what I like to do is imagine I've drunk like 50 cups of coffee and just start shaking my hand usually produces some nice effects don't do too much to want to control the brush and I'm turning the brush which keeps all the chips looking different as well I'm going to go back later and add some to the middle of the panels but I want to get the edges done first and that'll side where it needs a little more I did a kind of a big one there by accident so I'm going to surround it with a bunch of little ones it doesn't look like an accident anymore This is extremely time consuming. This is probably going to take me a couple days now. But hopefully, it'll work in the end. I can tell summer's coming because my paintbrush keeps drying out real fast. So there we go. That's the first layer of paint chips. Now I need a second um, for the deep scratches that really went through down into the paint. I need to add a second color on top of the first chips, and it gives a good uh, depth to the uh, paint chip. So I'm using uh, Dark Rust, ironically, from Pan's Races. It's a pretty good color for chips. Normally I like them uh, a bit more dark brown. This is a bit red, but uh, considering the, the parts that are red on the model already, it works out. So again, just thin down slightly. Have to be a bit more careful with this and my goal is to get it inside I mean, it's hard to do this and talk at the same time, get it inside the larger previous chips 
Not all of them. If I do remember all of them, it'll destroy the effect. Which is the big ones. And it's got to be inside, so the previous mix is uh, surrounding it. I'm not talking more. It's just it's actually kind of hard to do this uh, careful painting and talk at the same time. Okay, so that is one very small portion of the model kit chipped. I still got a lot more to do. So I got all the chip paint uh, chips done, thankfully. Took a long time. They are all over the place. And uh, even the bottom is uh, paint chipped. Yeah, take my word for it. Yep. Bottom, totally paint chipped. Mm hmm. Okay. Next. Uh, one of the last things I gotta do before I get back to the pigments is uh, add the rust. Now, of course, I tried doing that with the thinned out pigment wash, and that sucked big time. So I'm going back to what I know which is using uh, acrylic ink washes. I got a mix here of uh, its uh, Vallejo skin with a bit of India hang on India Indian excuse me Indian yellow and I got it thin slightly and I'm trying to I'm blobbing off the uh, brush so I have a bit more control over it And I'm just putting that where I need. And this is kind of just blob all over the kit, the original studio scale. I'm trying to make it a bit more uh, realistic, having a run down, as Russ should. I'm trying not to make the same mistake I did on uh, the other time. I'm not going to put too much. I always go back and add more. A little blob there I don't want. Just wet my brush, wipe it away. That is so much easier than the pigment wash. A little too 
much there, drying out the brush. So I could feather it out a bit. There we go. So I'm just going to have to do this around kit a bit and then wait till it dries and reapply if necessary. Let me dry slightly uh, darker than I want. I have to see how it looks. I'm going to go and apply this to uh, some of the engine areas. Most of the engine parts have uh, still have the original uh, screwed up pigment wash. Which at least there, it's a little bit uh, less hidden. Also, this is going to get a thick application of uh, black pigment. Actually, I may do a black wash on it too. I think I'll do a black wash too before I do the pigments. Since I'm not trusting the pigments right now uh, too much. So, there we go. Just gotta do that, uh, and then hopefully, really, really hopefully, next step is gonna be uh, flat varnish and pigments. I get this done in hopefully a day or two. On the last steps on the Falcon here, uh, there's one more thing I forgot to do before getting to the pigments: is the engine grills in the back. They're uh, pretty well shadowed, but I wanted to get a bit of paint in there. And actually, you can't paint it because um, it's so far recessed, I end up slopping it all over the place. Um, I'm almost tempted to mask everything off and airbrush it black and then dry brush over it. Um, which is not a bad idea, but uh, at this point, I really don't want to break the dry brush out. So, what I'm doing, I got a small pen. Pigma Micron, this is a number three. And if I could actually get the camera in here. Already filled in some of them. Just put them in the hole, swoosh it around, move to the next one. Kind of hard to do. So you can see it. There you go. I already did a few. So this will be done in a few minutes and then I could uh, start on the pigments. Okay. I'm on the last step. Yay! What I've done is I got a mix here of uh, big black pigment and just water this time and not messing with the Odo Center. I don't know if that's the problem or not, but uh, there you go. I'm also mixing a different consistency here. And so far it's been working pretty well. I'll show you what I already did. Here, here, here. Um, once these totally dry, I'm going to feather them out a little bit so they'll be slightly softer. I'll show you how I'm doing this. Got a piece of paper I'm using as a template and checking my references. Okay. So I'm doing this in black right now. I'm going to go over again with gray in a few spots, just get some variation. So, using paper, the edge of the paper to work with, and to make sure I get them all in the direction. Imagine a point in the center of the model and I'm drawing a line with a piece of paper into the point so all these will radiate outward in the same direction. It takes a second to line this up, make sure I got it right. Okay. The pigment's pretty thick right now, it's almost a paste. Thin line. Not too much. And look straight up on the paper. So I found out if I drag it, it'll smear the pigments along. 
So the line's almost straight, and I'm going to go back and uh, flush it out a little bit, thicken it up on top. There we go. And it's wet right now. It's going to dry a little bit, uh, a little lighter. Let me find another area. In the front here, there's a whole bunch of these little marks with all these little greebles. It's getting this a little hard. I have freehanded some of these, but I'm trying to use paper as much as I can. So there's one more here. So let me do that as a double one up here. It's a bit thick. There we go. So there's a whole bunch of these, and uh, I'm going to do all this, and then I'm going to do some uh, more around the pastels, especially around the, uh, I guess, the intake grills. There's a whole lot of black coming off these. I still got to do those, but I'm going to do that with straight powder. Uh, hopefully, that's going to be intense enough. If it's not, I'm going to have to come up with something else. I'm almost tempted to uh, airbrush it, but I want to try the pigments first. That's all for the moment. Doing the uh, last step here, I got the parts that I kept separate uh, glued on. These are our drying. I got the, the gun emplacements. And this, wait, no, this one. This is the one that goes on top that I was, uh, I did a bit of the interior work on. Once once it's in, you know, I can be able to see down the uh, two by made, especially with the cannon in the way. I was expecting that, so that's okay. Uh, last step is uh, the wet uh, pigments have dried, and that worked out a lot better than mixing it with the uh, oil thinner. I just mixed it with water, and um, in some of the areas where I messed up, I was able to just simply wipe it off with a little bit of moisture or reshape it with moisture. So those are all looking good. Now I got to do the dry pigments. I've done a little bit of a gr dark gray around the the ring there. And then I really got to get the uh, engine bits. I put some wet in there, but I also want to put some dry because it needs to be feathered to the outside. So, rub on a heavy amount. And we'll blow off the excess. It's okay if I get some on the outside. It's actually what I want. Remember not to touch the uh, model. I'm going to take off the uh, wet pigments. Just the uh, moisture on your fingers will peel it off. That's a bit too much pigment. As you may know, it's very important to do this with a, uh, a brand new brush with a very good tip. Okay. Uh, I'm much of it stuck as I wanted. Uh, I have to try plan B. I think I'll just try mixing a tiny bit of water into it. See if uh, that works. I just blew all of it off, pretty much. Alrighty. Yeah, the black is not sticking very well. Um, the gray stuck a lot better on its own. So, 
Let's uh, try something else. Okay, I did a very quick experiment. Uh, what it is, I made a thick paste just by adding a tiny amount of water to the pigments and then sort of dry brushing it to take the moisture back out at least as much as I can. More actually. I'm getting a better result of sticking better. Also switch to a better brush, so I have somewhat of a point on this one. So I drag it where I need. The other one wasn't getting into the recesses very well. And since I'm only using water, I can go back and fix whatever I don't like. There we are. I don't know if I ever said it, but uh, I don't have much experience with pigments. In case you couldn't tell by me uh, totally destroying the uh, model with the, the rust fiasco. Yeah, believe it or not, not too much. So, I am learning as I go along. But I am trying. And hopefully my screw-ups will uh, prevent you from doing the same. Try that again. Thick paste. Wipe it off. And uh, need some more color in the top bits here. Yeah, now we're talking. Yeah, just a little bit on the outside. Once it's dried, I'll go back and uh, clean it off the wires. Inside the engine grills, I just need to take a little bit of water. It comes right back off. Let me get a smaller brush here. Like a fine one. There it is. Part of the engines I want to bring to a point a bit better. Okay, there we go. Um, I'm let that dry and then feather it a bit more. Soften the edges. And uh, that should be it for this model. Let me do one rest, last thing here for you. We'll do the big reveal on the cockpit. I'm always worried when I do that because I never know what's gonna be on the other side. Paint could have uh, leaked underneath the mask, or the paint could pull off if the paint got too thick when I pull off the mask. So let me just pull off one or two here and see what we can see. Very careful not to scratch the plastic. Hello.
There they are. Plastic still looking uh, nice and uh, clean. I uh, don't think I mentioned I did polish it and wax it before uh, placing it on. So took out all those little scratches and you can really see through it now. So that's it. Um, this is pretty much done. Uh, the next video or a portion of this video should be uh, some beauty shots and um, putting it on the base. I'm going to make you wait for that so we can have some uh, momentous music to go along with it. Thanks for watching. Ta-da! It's done. Um, finally, after who knows how many hours of video footage, um, I just finished the last bit five minutes ago, and I'm officially calling it finito. Uh, the last little pieces are assembled. I had some few last-minute touch-ups to do uh, around the window here, especially along the edge. Looked a bit off, so I went around that with some uh, the pigment black wash to darken it looks better now and I had to add some more to the engine area down in there I never bother really wash the inside here or do any any detailing to it whatsoever um, and I decided I didn't need something so again I just used the black wash the black pavement wash and uh, what I figured out is by putting it on in with sort of the moist pasty dry brush method and then cleaning it up with a just a very very damp tooth, excuse me, very damp cotton swab. Let me try that again. A very lightly damp, damp cotton swab. Not a super damp one. Um, and then using that to take some of it off and then using the dry end to sort of reform it and feather it out. It worked really well. So here we are. That is the Falcon. This is the really dirty warm gray model. And this is the very clean cool gray base. I'll turn it this way for you. So you haven't seen this in a while. Um, haven't done anything else to it. The only thing change I made was um, I went over it with a uh, filter, big filter. I can't find the right one right now. but. Uh, filter system, which is basically just thinned, uh, I think it's very thin enamel paint. I believe that's what it is, doesn't say. But anyway, I have a blue for uh, Panzer Gray color. And just some of the areas along the edges, and especially in here, I went over it just twice with the filter to darken it a bit. But uh, that was it. Now, the idea is to get the very, like I said, the cold, clean base contrast by the extremely warm warm and extremely dirty Millennium Falcon model. Let me show you the underside here before it's lost forever. I, I did not chip it or do as much of the weathering as I did on top. Uh, I did do the sides here though because you might be able to see those but everything else no. Here we are. Let me get this lined up just right. There we go. And magnets allow me to fiddle with the positioning a little bit. That's it. There we go. I'll get some better shots at the end of this video. Now, I did say this is a uh, photo frame, so it has one added benefit, and that is a stand. Normally that wouldn't take place or be necessary or 
helpful. But in this case, it is perfect. Figures. Let me get some more light here. There's all the detail work. Battle damage there. See all the paint chips. That took forever. The engine uh, inserts there. I just covered with uh, the thick dry brush MIGS paste and then wiped it off with a uh, wet cotton swab. Worked very well. Engine grills. So, there we have it. Thing, a couple things I wanted to mention. I uh, just want to thank everyone for watching the videos. Um, I've only been making videos for about a month, so I'm still pretty new in it. I know I cranked out a lot on this Falcon build, but it was uh, it was fun to uh, show off some skills, and I got some good advice, and I hope everyone enjoyed them and perhaps learned something, or at least uh, not what to do, what not to do. So uh, up next, I don't know. Um, probably gonna take a short break and work on some video editing software so I can make some better videos 
Um, and next project, uh, who knows though. So, just wanted to uh, thank you all. And uh, show you my new wallpaper. Thanks a lot.